Okay, uh, welcome everybody. I'd like to call the meeting of the Greenfield special meeting of the Greenfield Historical Commission. Um, to order, it's five o'clock, and we're at City Hall. And um, let's see who's present. Um, so everybody in the room, can everybody just go around and identify themselves? I'm Erin Anholt, Chief of Staff. Uh, Jeremy Ebersole, alternate member of the committee. Commission. Commission. <laughs> Margo Jones, uh, co-chair. Uh, no, vice chair of the commission. <laughs> uh, John Pasilia, chair of the commission. Uh, Sarah Bulldog, part of the commission. Uh, Matt Abbey, member of the historic commission. And in the bed, we have some guests, you guys. There's I'm Julia Spinell, the community builders. Did you get that, Tim? We like to just make sure we have it in that. Yes. Yeah. And I have it written down here. I'm Jay Chase, uh, representing Griffith Sims Bank. Thomas Shaco, representing Griffith Sims Did you get that, Tim? No. I'll send it to you. <laughs> well, okay. Representative of the Greenfield much. Savings Bank. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I get I have the people from the last meeting. The problem is that the sound quality in that room is not great. So the farther they are away from this mic, yeah. the more uh, garbled their voices get. But we'll get it all. Margo's it's not the Zon Center, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and Tim, do you have the folks that are on my screen? Yes. Jim, you can see their, you got Jim their names. Juan, Scott Laidlow, Don, and uh, Sam Beatty, it says here. Sam Beatty and uh, Jim Lloyd, yeah. Okay. And Epsilon Associates. Epsilon Associates. Yeah. John Kelleher and your associate, Doug. Oh, yeah. Doug's not there. Okay. You tell me. Oh, okay. We can't, we can't hear anything that you guys yeah. are saying right now. <laughs> yeah, Epsilon is muted. So, yeah. but unmute, please, Epsilon. Epsilon, can you unmute yourselves? Huh, they aren't muted. They aren't muted, but they can't hear us, right? You can hear us, though, right? Thumbs up if you can hear us. Right on. Well, there is that. Okay. Well, if you need anything, you can put it in the chat, and we can look in there. Excellent. And we also have John Williams that just ordered, uh, entered. Oh, John Williams. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tim, Tim's got that, I think, under control. Okay, so uh, first order of business, um, approving the August 1st meeting minutes circulated by email. Um, uh, Margo had mentioned that she had some corrections to make to that, so. Yes, uh, where are they? Um, uh, Tim, there, the date was wrong for the next meeting. And I just, sorry, I should find it here in just a minute. Uh, the um, the survey and planning grant next meeting has not been determined yet. I haven't heard back from Mass Historic yet. Okay, so, so, so the June 24th date is wrong? It's incorrect, yeah. Okay. And it would have been incorrect saying it in, in August. <laughs> At any rate, uh, we've done our review. It was lengthy and considerable, and uh, we wait to hear from Mass Historic. Okay. Is that the only uh, amendment or correction that we have? Um, no. Well, then the next meeting is scheduled for now, September 5th, I believe, at this location. I don't think well, so. No, I think we'd go back to the Zon because we know that that's our, our place. So, yeah. Because we could, if we if we did that, and then they said, "Oh, we've got a meeting of the something commission." All of a sudden, that's why we that's why we don't meet here. So I would I would say we should stay at the Zon absolutely until we in, until there is determination that there's a place that we can go. This is going to be where meetings are from now on. Well, the only problem with that is that we've moved several times. I and know, and it's frustrating, but this is how we're going to have meetings here to make it easier for um, uh, open meeting laws to be in compliance. So is that a guarantee from the town that we'll be able to yes. meet here? It is? At the we time. Will, we yeah. will have, we will reserve. Bumps been bumped before many times. I mean, obviously there are emergencies that come up. That happens, but, you know, send us the schedule. We'll put you guys on there. It's but the this first is, Thursday of the month. Yeah. Five o'clock. Yep. 
And if there is an emergency, then sorry, <laughs> I can't, I can't help that. But um, we need to be, we need to do everything we can to be in compliance with open meeting laws. And um, this is the best way to do it. Okay. And I know that stinks. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the other issue, because we've talked about it at length, and some of the other issues we had was like handicap accessibility, things yeah, like that. But the building right. is fully handicap accessible. It's not as, you know, there's, it's not as accessible as I think the grand ideal would yeah. be, but it is accessible. And um, we have, we just have to stay in compliance with open meeting laws. And this is the, the safest way to protect all of us for open meeting law. Uh, okay. What about the technology, though? What about it? Well, I mean, I don't know how to use it. So I do, and it's super easy. And we can you can show us or train you know, us how to it do is it. It is seriously the easy, it's so easy. I okay. yeah. Well, John and I would like to learn. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if we're gonna meet yeah. here. No, yeah. No, no, no. And I can show you guys um either after this meeting or before we start the next one. I promise it will take maybe 30 seconds, and we yeah. always have a user manual out. It okay. is Okay. I right. mean, I just, you know, to be, to be honest, yeah, I, I am reluctant only just because they, one minute they say it's great and it's all good gravy. And the next thing they're like, you're out in the doghouse. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, so, I mean, I'm, and I'm cool. Like, I'd love to meet here. I think it's great and yeah. all, but I, 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 I just want it to be kind of like for real. Yeah. Just no, have I, a bad I, I have record. Concerns. I really do. You What's have a that bad record. Your record is bad. So if you can straighten out your record, that'd be great. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna. We're not beating up. We're not beating up on you at all. No. But it, sure. you, know, you know, sort of. Eight days are these going around? <laughs> I'm, I'm not taking responsibility for anything that happened four eight days ago. But yeah, yeah. I'm also on. You know, I'm also responsible to make sure that we're in open meeting law compliant. I totally get you. Yeah. So, this is what we think is the best way to do it. If it doesn't work, you know what? We can change it. I mean, okay. nothing's set yeah. in stone. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, because really we because we had we had talked about meeting here and there were some issues and um, then also at the library as well, but again they didn't really have the technology in place was my the last conversation I had with them. Place now. Yeah. Um, and that can be an alternate location if there is something okay. drastic yeah. because drastic things happen. Um, but this for. I'm just focusing on open meeting law compliance. It's an issue and we have to do that. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you guys. I appreciate um, that. Yeah, sure. Um, I move to accept the minutes as amended. Any other comment? Second. All in favor? Aye. Tim. Aye. All right. And, and actually, Tim, can you add uh, Jeremy to the letterhead? Of course. Great. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's good. Um, since we're on the topic of the next meeting, sort of, we kind of went there. Do you guys really want to meet next next week, next Thursday? Seems a little... I'm indifferent. Doesn't matter to me. All right, well, I, I will put my two cents out there. It's the Franklin County Fair. It's yeah. the Fair Parade. Um, and I'm involved in several aspects of that. So for me, it would be kind of sucky. Um, and we're meeting right now. And we're, so. We've met twice. We've met, yeah. Three times. And, and, you know, I mean, and, right, absolutely. Like, I do whatever whatever it takes, but it seems, I feel like we got this. Let's skip it. We, so we can skip it and go to an October meeting. Great. That sounds good. Thank All right. Master. Tim, you okay? Time to get back to yeah, two. what's the date? Um, uh, whatever the 1st of October meeting would Let's be. Let's find out. Yep, yeah, we can tell you. Would be the 3rd. Okie doke. Yep. Okay. I wish this pen worked better. I got the. No, um, all right, perfect. All right, so minutes approved. We can move on and help these folks get on their way. All right, so new business, Weave It Hobie House, letter of support for Massachusetts Historic Rest Rehabilitation Tax Credit, application for the renovation of the new Weave It Hobie House at 402 Main Street. Um, and this is the letter here. We all have a copy. Tim, you've got a copy? Yes. Online. Um, the one as amended and sent out today. Yes. Yep. Okay. Got the right date on it. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I would entertain a motion to accept the letter as presented. Second that. Seconded. Any other discussion? Tim, you good? 
Oh, Margo, sorry. I thought you were like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, well, I misconstrued I just, your hand. I just want to say that I'm, I, I think on behalf of the board that we are so excited that you stepped forward to make this large investment in our community in the most significant building we have. So uh, the, I reviewed the plans as an architect and I think you're respecting it and fulfilling the uh, Secretary of Interior standards in a really exciting way. So, uh, and Jake is an arborist. Oh, good. So in regard to your trees question, we will make sure that we will probably have a tree company come in and just from that older tree because you need a tree to get her right. Yeah, the other tree just needs some structural planning for safety and the building and public. So, but yeah. we will make sure that it is healthy. Great. I mean, I uh, I use the rule of thumb for the age of it, and I, I think it's over 200 years old. And so it's historic. Sure. And mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. um, Secretary of Interior standards requ require respect and re preservation of historic planting materials whenever possible. So mm -hmm. sure, that would be great. I mean, still a crash course in my background. I used to work for the Trust for the Reservations. I was the superintendent for the Southern Berkshires. Oh. So three of my properties were National Historic Landmarks. Now I'm keg with my baby. Oh, wow. So I know trees from the gardens. I've worked with a mass historical, Paul Holtz on many grant projects. So I have the utmost respect for this property. Thanks. Well, that's Wonderful. Great. Wow. We bring the big gun. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> nice. Cool. <laughs> All right. All right. If there's no other further further discussion. Um, so so move to approve the letter. All those in favor? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Aye. Okay. Aye. Tim, aye. Tim, yeah. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, Thank you guys once again. Yeah. yeah. I, Thank you. I, we are very proud of what we're going to do, and it's going to be. We're going to bring it back. It's going to be everyone's going to be proud of this whole section of Greenfield. I'm psyched, and I definitely echo what Margo was saying. I mean, it's it's one of the biggest icons of town. Uh, you can go back. You could you could have moved away 50 years ago, and you'd be like, there it is. Everybody knows it. So it's so cool. I've also met with the Veterans Association about the statue in front. Yep, they're very excited. We're going to keep it. We're going to clean it, and uh, because I guess two parades stop every correct the veterans the, yes. Memorial Day parade stop and salute that mm -hmm. statue. We're adding right. two more handicap spots because I don't know, someone from the new library said they were with the ADA, but there isn't an ADA <laughs> department there, but someone said they were, but we are, I agree that we will put two more handicap spots because there's really only three spots for the, for both locations. So yeah, seems we're like adding it. two more handicap spots and we will make that a better option for both buildings to have more handicap parking as you talked about the handicap here we felt it'd be appropriate there so awesome. uh, we're really excited and thank you very much for approving the letter thanks for coming out yep. thank, you. Nice day. thank you thank you guys you. Yep. yeah take care cool all right okay so next item on the agenda is the letter of support for Franklin County, Commu Franklin Community Co-op's application for Massachusetts Historic Rehabilitation Tax Credits for the Greenfields Market Relocation Expansion Project. And do we have a letter? I haven't seen it. Yeah, that. we have a, also a letter. I'm sorry. It's, see, I gave you three. Oh, you did? And I gave it to those two? Yeah. I was like, oh, it's three <laughs> copies. Wow, yeah. Margo. I felt like a digital everything. May, may I <laughs> see right. the other one? Yes, <laughs> So one of them is for condominium number two, that's Greenfields Market or yeah. also called Franklin Community Co-op, right, John? He's muted. Oh, well, uh, so that that's the first one. Yeah, I'm looking at that one over here. And again, this the two projects, condominium number one and condominium number two are, are so exciting and so important and like a huge uh, matter for our city that it's all going forward and I can't be more enthusiastic than a letter of support. Uh, Epsilon, do you want to can I, can I say one? anything about this? Is, so it's a second letter. Is this yeah, that was the. Oh, so there is two packages. You're muted still, Doug. 
Can you unmute? We, sorry, we can't hear you. Are they muted there? Oops. Yeah. Oh. Now they're muted. No, yeah. they're still muted. Yeah, now, oh, yeah, they're muted now. Thank you, Peter. Oh, there we go. Oh, yay. Can you talk now? I don't think they have a mic on there, Andrew. Their I don't see you have a microphone. We still can't hear you. Your mic isn't turned on. Yeah. All right. Is your mic on, Doug? Sorry, guys. We we can't hear you at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're cheering uh, silently. Yeah. Um, but we're we're excited for the project. Right. I. Yes. Yeah. Call, call in. Yeah. No, that doesn't always yes. work either. Uh, can okay. you guys explain why there are there are two letters, two different letters? Condominium one and condominium two. I can explain. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah perfect. They're, they're, they're two different projects. Yeah. Two yeah. Two different owners. So John Williams, who's on is representing the co op. So again, as I explain our partnership, I won't see how Sure. Because I know yeah, they've come before. Like, kind of. Sure. So both uh, the community builders organization I represent and the community co op will be acquiring condos within the existing building. And both of us are pursuing um, tax credits or regardless of the state historic. This is the same sort of tax credits for Larry. Yes. Okay. yes. Mm -hmm. These are tax credits um, for our respective products. So yeah. that's why they're two separate, the two separate owners and the tax credits will be, you know, awarded independently to each, and each of us will and move forward with that. Well, okay, right on. Um, and now does this does this in, uh, cover the new construction behind in no, so we're not applying. So the new construction would be just on behalf of my organization and community builders. Yeah. And so we are not applying for tax credits. They're not, it's not eligible yeah. cost for us as part yeah. of it. So it's just for the qualified expenses within the condo and the building. Right on. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, Matt, Sarah, Jeremy, any thoughts on the project? No, oh, it beats having an empty building there on Main Street. It's, it's, that's it's all I have to say so about needed. it. It's just the pit, man. I want to see the pit go. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it, that's where they I tried to make it a skate yeah. park. I thought yeah. I would kind of, but you know, it anyway. would be a, a little to the yeah. start of the pit. Um, yeah, we just don't Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Those, I read not yeah. every single word, but both of them looked through them, and yeah, and they both look like really well thought out projects that meet the standards. Yeah, absolutely. And the presentation um, that we we saw was super cool. And I'm sure everybody in town is excited to see something happen. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and John, maybe you can speak. I understand that you'll be sorry. restoring a lot of tin ceilings. John has sent a, a memo note, if you'll look. Oh, in the... A memo what? In the oh, comments? In the he sent comments yeah. saying he supports what Julia said. Yeah, we saw, okay. I saw that. Okay. It, was, it was on the screen. Thank you. Okay. Are you okay. able to hear me? This is Scott Laidlaw from... Yeah, Laidlaw I can Sox. hear you perfectly, yes. sir. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. For some reason, I guess uh, mine is working where others are not. Uh, yes, we are going to be restoring tin ceilings as much as possible throughout the ground floor. Great. That's exciting. Mm. Very cool. So it's just such a sorely needed. And project. I know that I know it's a big project, and um, let's say there's multiple phases. Can just for my own edification, can you kind of give me a, a timeline on those phases? Okay, yeah. that would be an answer. I think John would be John or Julia would be better able to answer that right now. Great, thank you. Right now, the envision work will begin in winter on the project. Uh, the housing project will be, um, again, I can't, I don't want to speak to John's timeline and they're still sorting that out, but um, the housing project hopefully would um, begin the, the enabling work of the project in the winter time. Yep. And then the full robust housing um, rehab work and uh, new construction would begin in the summer. And that's, that's, that's our the best case scenario. So we're still you know, working with our, our funding partners to iron. Um, and that the that's on the top top floor or is the top two floors or am I a lot of site work and then yes uh, two through five within the existing building uh, some of the second floor is uh, the back half of the building will be office space for FCC so that work 
uh, what happened when SEC just figured those out, which I and, and I know is soon within that timeline as well. Cool. All right. Thank you, John. I got that on the text. Um, related to ask question related to the timeline, I I I understand there's some kind of a concern where there's a pennant on the ground floor. Does that impact the timeline, or is that we, we can't discuss the existing tenant as okay. the current building owner? That's their okay. their negotiations and SEC and TCB are the current. Okay. Oh, okay. Huh. Um, but of course, we support you know a, a happy a happy solution. Of course. Yes. Yeah. I just curious about that. Yeah, it's a timeline, but understand we can't talk about it. I say I love that you're bringing back the the cupola on top of it. That's a nice mm -hmm. touch that you know not strictly necessary, but it's really great from a historic preservation perspective to bring it back. Sure, is exciting to see that even just the potential of that. Um, Tim, you you good? Any other comments on the proposed letters? I'm going to take that as a no. You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Tim. I just want to know if you had anything else to add. I'm sorry. No, no, I'll I'll add if I need to. Don't worry. <laughs> Good I'm, to know. I'm, Assuredly, I'm not, I'm not bashful. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm seeing that now. Um, okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, Move to approve. Uh, second. Yeah. All right. Um, entertain a vote. Uh, all in favor of approving. The proposed letter of support, aye. All right, that's a unanimous approval. Um, great, thank you guys. Thank you, we, we're super excited again for a great project and look forward to seeing that happen. Right. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. We'll be on the sidewalk. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Okay. Applauding every move. <laughs> thank you guys. Wait to see the facade come down. Oh, I know. It'll be so much nicer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're just finally getting this stuff done. Um, well, it's nice to see people excited about downtown, too. Like, when you are going on Main Street, people are looking at the windows and looking at the project, and they're excited about it. I know. I, I, I wonder if they're going to save it. I'd love to see, like, one of the W or something. I think they, I think, I think they are. Yes. When, yeah, when are. the, the co-op came in and talked with us, oh, okay. they, they mentioned that they were planning on, like, repurposing or, you know, I, so I think they won't just trash them. There's also, if you contact the co-op, they've been offering walkthroughs every few months to show their plans. You might be able to, um, I think if you contact Caitlin von Schmidt at the co-op, who's their PR person now, I, I mean, she probably has more roles, but I think that's what she does. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, I know there's one coming up. You might be able to tell her, you know, I'm doing the historical Commission yeah. board. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm still learning the official <laughs> titles of everything. Yeah. Um, Historic commission. Oh, historical yeah. historical yeah. commission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and just to take yeah, take a moment as ta as Tim mentioned that um, it was incorrectly posted on the screen before that oh, we were the sorry. historic society. Yeah. yeah. That might have been my bad. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Right. It, it's it's no. It's okay. A lot of people get us confused. Yeah. Like they come and complain about a, a thing or whatever. I'm like no, that's not us or it. There's a big learning curve to learn the proper names of not only people, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a lot. So yeah. I apologize. No, I'll try and get it right totally now. Fine. If I don't, you can throw We know those them. guys. We know those yeah. guys. We're, and we're cool with them. We're cool with them. Did you all see John's posting that he sent? Oh, yeah. Yes. They yeah. plan on That's... repurposing Wilson's items. That's great. That's I, really cool. I'm I, excited to see how that turns out. Yeah, maybe they could donate one of the letters to the to the fairgrounds museum. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good idea. That's I'm not thought. so common anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, it'd be cool is if you had like uh, if you had like letters just spread out in different spots around town, make it a fun little activity to go and go and find them all. Yeah. <laughs> also, contact us to see if joining a tour is feasible. Yeah, like when they when they did Mass Mocha, when they first, you know, that was an old factory and it was really gnarly and stuff in there. And there was all kinds of like random old industrial stuff. And they reused a lot of that stuff in, you know, in the museum and kind of turned it into artwork a little bit. And, and also gave taught a little bit educated about, you know, the history of Sprague Electrics and what they did and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. Inter, interspersed within the space. So I thought it was cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Because I mean, that Wilson's phase, you know, obviously the skirting has to come down, but the Wilson space is, you know, an important piece of the mm -hmm. historical narrative. It was there so for a hundred years. That, that 
I'm biased. I did my thesis on neon sign preservation. So I oh, yeah. signs, but <laughs> you would have loved the, the dry clean, the swift dry cleaners, dude. I've seen that picture. My oh husband, yeah. Like, it off on a tangent, but he just, he just, <laughs> they just cut it up. So glad the sign or part of it. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Epsilon is asking that you sign them and somebody. Well, I will give them to Aaron. Him, yeah. I will give them to Aaron. If that's okay, we will sign these tonight. I will give them to you and you will have them directly. And, and who am I giving them to? Well, Eric uh, should know, but, but I can uh, give them to Eric. Give them to Eric, yes. Yeah. Eric would know. The stakeholders, so the Epsilon, it, it's Doug Kelleher at okay. Epsilon, so it's yes. Yeah. Eric would know, that's fine. Yeah. And then tell us when it's done. So are you are you gonna come to all our meetings, right? So that we, we can just like Listen. streamline. Okay. This is mint, the because problem. then we can just be like, well, bam. I don't have to be like, oh. the problem here is my husband and I are but we're both history majors. So um, oh. I could derail things. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. All right. Well, that's why we're here, you know, because we like this stuff. That won't take um, much to derail stuff. That's what we do. We, yeah. We're derail splitters. Um, okay. Anywho. Okay. So you'll sign one copy. Yep. And yes. I can even do that right go. now. Great. Um, so next item on the agenda, we will take a uh, Two minute break. One second break. Come on, Dan. Okay, I got I promise. Okay. We should go on. Let's do any construction. She had yes. some sort of something happening. I haven't had a chance to chat with her. So oh, okay. I am here speaking on behalf of the mayor's office oh, the city okay. of Greenfield. Great. Um, so, so and I assume, so the next order is uh, the YMCA church discussion of topics relevant to the Zion Church building near the YMCA with the mayor. Uh, and Aaron is gonna be here representing the town. So the floor is yours. Um, no, why don't you guys go first and tell me where we, <laughs> where we are. Cool. Well, uh, well, where we are. Well, uh, you know, we're the Historical Commission. Mm -hmm. The church is pretty dang historical on a number of different uh, aspects yes. not, not only the fact that it's it's really the only remaining colonial church in town um and that it had an important role in the anti-slavery movement mm -hmm. um and that it's right on main street and it really makes the look of greenfield look like new england um so at least from my personal opinion those are some pretty big pretty and, big and the story behind it is is cool like how it ended up in greenfield so. yeah and then it's always been a church, too. I mean, I think that that's, you know, it was never, um, uh, you know, a dance studio or an archery place or something like that. It was always been a church mm -hmm. and it was and it was disassembled lovingly and reassembled lovingly to be a church by a church. You know, and I think that's an that's a phenomenal story. Um, and it was recently incorporated in a historical walking tour of the town. <laughs> so it's like, oh, OK, this was here. Um, Anyway, and then we we toured it um, and found that the condition was like really not that bad. Um, th not that I'm an engineer or anything like that, but it, you know, whatever. Um, and then I guess the last thing I would, I, I would say personally, like, I'm a huge supporter of the YMCA. I think we all are, you know, I'm a member. I use it a lot. I think that I support their mission. Um, I love that they're downtown. I love that they, you know, that kids can take the bus to there and it, and they employ kids. Like everything about them is awesome. I'm saying is a great, great organization. Um, I, I just, I wish there was a way to make that work. Um, and and I've been in in a lot of touch with Grady and and he's a great guy. Yeah. So anyway. I know nobody doubts that everybody loves the Y. Like we get that. It, it can be hard to bridge some of those gaps sometimes. And we do understand that. I did want to correct that it is not a colonial church. It is a Greek revival style, just because yeah. I am a stickler. <laughs> what I meant was like colonial era. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's also not colonial era. Yeah, it was right. built in 1830, which is quite a bit after colonial era. Right. Um, but again, yes. I was a stickler and was a history major for a reason. <laughs> so um, I think that there are a few things that we really, you know, I think we all know that the YMCA has a great history of supporting the community. Um, they've done a lot of, I mean, we all know how important the Y is. I don't think anybody's arguing against that. And they really do need the space to 
expand the way that they can continue to support the community. Um, it was a very generous donation and, you know, we, we all understand that there are some pretty serious environmental concerns related to the church. Um, there are lead paint and asbestos issues being two major ones that have to be addressed and um, no matter that they have to be addressed. Um, the slate roof is also in disrepair. It's making the area around it unsafe. You can see slate tiles that have fallen and broken. Um, I think that if there is a delay in demolishment, it's going to have a pretty severe impact on the YMCA's plan for how they're going to use this property. And that's something we have to take into consideration as well. Um, there are lots of ways that other communities have found to honor buildings like this that are uh, falling into disrepair um, and that are environmentally unsound for the community. Um, the Historic American Building Survey has an intensive documentation process and they can include high quality photographs, architectural drawings, thorough historical report that we can display in various locations primarily the library or inside of the YMCA. Um, we can find ways to collaborate with local artists to photograph, make videos, um, all, the, all the ways that our artist community can preserve the building in, in, in a way that is still allowing, the building's memory, I guess. Um, we could also develop an interactive website um, that is both on the YMCA as well as the Greenfield City website. Um, this has been done successfully in many other communities. And we could also put a museum exhibit in the historical museum here in town, or even have a small exhibit here in City Hall. There are lots of places to do something like that. I think that it's one of those things that it, I can I see being a hard decision and there's a lot of thought going into it. I I know you guys are being very thoughtful and deliberate in this process and I do appreciate that. Um, I, I, I just wanna make sure that, I do appreciate that, I I, I do, so yeah. Okay, uh, Margo, tell me. So um, Aaron, when Brady came to us, uh, Grady, sorry, uh, to make the argument that they absolutely couldn't use this building because they needed it for childcare. We weren't given the benefit of, of any really robust information. Okay. I understand there was a feasibility study. Yes. And it was referred to, but we weren't, there wasn't any annotation of how much square footage they want to build or need to build. There wasn't, it was kind of, there were no floor plans that might indicate what they wanted to do with it. There wasn't any budget material there. I mean, it was just sort of, we want, we actually really need to tear this down and I'm sorry. <laughs> but I actually personally think that childcare would go well in there and every it was single, a daycare. yeah, every Re the most recent use was, I a mean, lead paint is not if, a big deal. Yeah. Well, if, if, if I'm remembering correctly from, he had, he had had some consultants or architects come in and he, he was, well, he had then has compared the cost of renovating the existing building to make it suitable for childcare versus tearing it down and using existing space inside of the building already, but then turning the land into playground space because there's some sort of EEC or, or whatever it is standards that he had to meet for square footage of playground space if you were to add another preschool classroom. And I, I think that was his big thing was he was like, you know, it would just take him longer to take the wide, the longer to make the money back on renovating the right. church versus yeah. tearing it down. Uh, Jeremy. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. To, to, to that point, I think and that's based on the perspective of one consultant who yeah, somebody right. had worked through the building. And I, again, being, you know, new to the commission, but not newer to, not new to preservation. So I kind of come at this from the perspective of a, you know, someone who ran a preservation advocacy organization for a number of years, but the number of times that we heard that buildings cannot be saved because one consultant was brought in to look at it. And then we brought in other consultants who were more familiar with 
historic buildings who are able to give uh, other opinions on the usability and the restorability of the, the buildings. And we save those buildings and turn them into housing for homeless veterans and other things. So we're really important uses. Um, and what, I mean, what, one thing that if I could add one additional point, again, looking as I was trying to kind of think through this and also like understand the, the commission and the role of the commission and like, what exactly can we do? How does this demolition delay work? You know, I thought I should read the ordinance. Like what actually, what does it say about, about what we do and when we invoke this and how we can do it? And obviously, you know, we have to have a public meeting and public hearing and all of these things. Um, uh, but it, it looks, you know, from my reading of the ordinance, you know, we're determining if there's... <laughs> Just for the record, Mayor Disorder has joined us. Okay, great. Um, you know, so as I'm looking at the ordinance, you know, we, if we designate, if we establish this commission establishes after a public hearing that it's a preferably preserved significant building in the public interest, yeah, uh, to be preserved or rehabilitated rather than demolished, then it's subject to this demolition delay. Uh, and so it, you know, based on that reading, like the issue, what this committee or this commission is thinking through is not, you know, what is the use of the building in the future? What is the condition of like there, the other parts of the city can determine this building is a safety hazard and needs to come down right now, but that's not in the purview of this commission based on what I see in the ordinance. Like the issue that we would be considering is, um, you know, that we're looks like bound by the ordinance to consider is what is, is what is being demolished in the public interest to preserve or not. And then looking at, you know, what the ordinance says, it says pretty clearly to my reading, the Greenfield Historical Commission shall determine that a structure be designated as a significant structure and then the demolition delay invoked if it meets one of these criteria, one of which is listing on the National Register of Historic, National Register of Historic Places, which the building is indeed listed on. So, I mean, to me, when I see the word shall rather than may, I mean, it sounds, it reads to me as if the building is listed on the register, and so we shall determine that it is designated as a significant structure, and therefore, and there's a number of reasons, I mean, I think other reasons to go that route, but um, again, looking strictly at the, you know, what's in the ordinance, it appears that all these other, like, the only thing that we really can consider is, is it this to work or not? Can I ask a clarifying question? Um, I. I was on, I thought it was on a state historic registry, but it's on the national. Yes. Okay. On, thank you. Yeah. My, I just, thank you. And one leads to the other. Okay. If the state accepts it as significant, they're, they have a high bar and the national register will also accept it. Hmm. That's interesting. And um, when did it, yeah. So also, can I, I'm sorry, can I just, Oh, well, I mean, for just a second. Sure, yeah, I needed just my yeah. notes today. Um, <laughs> so so notes I was just, there. one of the things was, does the benefit of keeping the building outweigh the benefit to removing the building? Is that correct? Or is that, is that if it's not on the historic site? It, I don't think it says anything about the benefit. Yeah. It doesn't, that, that the, language isn't in the there at all. It's, that I, as, as I was reading it, basically, you know, that we, that the, this commission determines if it, is a preferably preserved significant building, in which case we invoke the demolition delay. And yeah, so it has, so there's nothing at all in the ordinance about what happens after, like what happens to the site, what would happen to the building, what the other use would be. It's only, is this building, yeah. I can pull up the, I mean, the actual Yeah, yeah. Based, based, yeah. Up, based upon its age and its significance in the town, does it qualify, if it qualifies, then that demolition delay is invoked. Right. Yeah. So, like, what happens afterwards is just outside of the purview. Like, we don't. Correct. We right. know, like we're whether or not they, whether or not they, they park cars in there, make it to child care is, is not yeah. necessarily our right. to this. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, right. I'm yeah. just asking clarity. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's my, that's, that's my reading yeah. at least of the ordinance. As someone, like, new to the ordinance, what but not new to the ordinance. Two, it's two two forty one. I think there's other rationale, but that oh, was sure. the one that jumped, up, jumped out to me. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier to like literally read the book. Because I think, yeah, often yeah. you know, we get there's so many other discussions that are important, but for this discussion, it's like like the law. Is it historic? It's, that's yes. not part of this discussion. Yeah. It's 1842. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, so based on that reading, uh, I mean, I, I'm as much as I, I, can, I can't overemphasize enough um, how much I support the why and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a tough one. It's, um, it's, it's kind of impossible for us to be like, yeah, just go ahead and knock it down. We, we kind of can't. We kind of can't. Um, I mean, and, and I feel like we have to have a public hearing. Uh, we have to have a hearing on it just to get, you know, uh, people's input from the town. Um, and I, I think it would be wrong for people just to see them ripping into it, being like, you know, the common man is not watching this meeting. The common man is not there. They're just going to see a crane coming by, ripping into it. And be like, well, what happened there? Do they even like have a hearing on that? I, I think that's that's bad. It, it doesn't look like we have a choice based on the yeah. Like there has to be a public hearing. Um, you know, and, and I guess the other thing I would kind of this is a little bit of an aside is I would go back to if they don't have they don't have the money they don't have money like at all kind of so it's not like keeping it. Is it going to prevent them from building the new pool or something like that? They're not going to, I mean, based upon what we've understood that it's not like they're ready. They have a shovel ready project and this demolition is going to cost them money. Like in a typical scenario in the past where the demolition delay is really just putting a hurt on, on contractors and costing them money, getting, you know, their loans aren't getting, you know, but in this case, it's really, I mean, and I, you know, again, I'm not like, but in this case, it doesn't cost them money to mothball it, to leave it there, to let it just chill. I think the only thing I would push back on that a little bit because of construction and labor costs and how rapidly they've gone up. But I think I think that is Yeah, for sure. But they don't they don't have any plan to do anything. Step. Or do they? As far as I know, they don't have any plan to build or do anything. I haven't seen that. And, and just by just by virtue of them having the church, they have that whole, like Margo said, they have that whole front yard, which more than tenfold increases their child care outdoor space size. That's just by using yes, But it is <laughs> yeah. unsafe because of lead paint on the outside of the building, as well as slate tiles. So they would have to do some remediation of the paint yeah. and make sure that the roof was... At, completely secured as well as make sure that there was no way for any children to enter the building. And they fence had the, a fence around the church would do that, all of those yeah. things. So they also, um, they had a signed demolition contract with Western Massachusetts Demolition. Well, that's new to us. It's, it's new to us, yeah. Uh, I, it can't happen. It's out of order, isn't it? In fact, it's Grady, it's like they did that too early, right? In fact, Grady emphasized when he came to talk to us that they had no concrete plans. I uh, believe this was, it came out August 27th that they have the that yesterday? contract. <laughs> okay. Uh, so they're moving forward. Thanks uh, for the heads up, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. But they don't have a permit. Um, no. So, right. So they and can't get a permit to act on that contract until they get that signed by us. Steps. That. Same steps you always follow. And I do think that it is worth, you know, considering as well that there are ways that would still satisfy the, the, the code that aren't necessarily preserving the building itself that have been done successfully other places where you you are able to preserve, I guess, the spirit of the building in a way without having to preserve the building itself. Nah. The argument at this point is whether or not the building needs to come down at all because they have ample space in the front to do their you know, extra child care activities. Not only that, but we've already established that the building is of historic. So I do believe they have a feasibility study and an architect, is that correct, Mayor? Yeah, I actually, I, I was late. I'm sorry. I apologize. Totally it's always another meeting. That and I'm still catching up, so I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm, totally so I'm going to, I actually going to put a couple of things down. And so I'm just, he couldn't be here tonight. Um, and so I'm just reading from his. Hi, sorry, Tim. How are you? Well, nice to see you again. I'm always glad to see you. So, so. But, um, so I'm just going to read it. It said, well, I just want to say this and then I'll answer anything sure. that I know how to answer, which might not be very much. Okay. The company that I. He said they did have a demo contract, of course, like you said, 
the company would be filing all applications and 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 permits, which I know I actually know because I want planning board. Everything would have to be signed off on. We'll work with the city and contractors, and that would be you all too for disconnects for electricity. Um, they're moving forward now with hazmat removal, I think, and um, they did some research and talked about what the, like the four corners and the posts of. I'm looking for that part. Um, they were, we are discussing honoring the history of the church by saving up to four foundation cornerstones. Did you read that already? I haven't gotten. And up to, to up to front granite steps to create a memorial siting or uh, area along the main street frontage complete with a historical marker. Um, and, and I will just say, I, I don't, what, what you said about where they could be, um, I do know that that um, I used to be on the board of the YMCA, so I'm going to just. Be, so did so, I. It's, yeah, I was so president actually for a while. For so did I. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds yeah. like so that, the Y has not that they really do need to provide maybe more plans and a and. This is completely you know, news to us. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, so, can I, like, I think that Jeremy is very wise to refer us to the. I agree. The uh, our legal obligation and. The inspector of buildings, when they get an application for demolition of a listed significant building, which is what this is, within seven days shall forward uh, the application to the Greenfield Historic Commission. We then have 45 days to schedule a hearing, a public hearing. So it's sound, I mean, from what I'm from what I'm understanding, there's not voting on a six month delay at this point is premature because nothing right. has been put into place. Right. So we're kind of, what we should do is encourage the Y to come back with their feasibility and the building inspector and all that jets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think they can start remediation without this hearing. Without a permit. It's right. A, there's a whole, there's a whole timeline flowchart yeah. flow of, mm -hmm. Of how it all works. So because well, if they're remediating it for just wholesale demolition, they take stuff out willy nilly. They don't do it carefully. If it's for preservation of pieces of the building or even preserving the building, then it, it's another. It's a different contract. Yeah. Yeah, I I I want to point out here that. At this point, we had a visit from Grady who told us that they had no concrete plans, but he wanted to let us know what the reasoning was behind it. Since that time, we've heard nothing from the Y. Now what we find is that they have moved forward. Uh, we did not get any hard information about this feasibility study or about any of the studies that they've had done. And we certainly didn't know that they had started work on, on that space without having uh, the demolition permit or anything else. And I personally feel like we're being blindsided by this thing because we were assured when Grady was talking to us that they were going to keep us in the loop and they were going to, they were going to work forward on, on how to, how to deal with this building. And we made it clear to him at the time that we had some doubts, but we didn't take any firm position because they didn't have a firm uh, uh, plan. Now they have a plan, but I think I think we're getting, uh, you know, blindsided, as I said, and I think I'm not happy about that. I think we need more information before we can even seriously discuss this. And if it if we said to them, for example, you guys need to get a different consultant or another consultant or somebody that we know has has the pr preservation in mind, they should consider that seriously. So mm -hmm. I think I think the ball is in the wise court. I think, uh, yeah. I, I'm hearing everything that you said. I just said I would come because we couldn't be yeah. here. I was the person with the talking points in front of me. Not that I am, but Tim, I, I hear what you're saying. And um, there is a uh, process that needs to be followed. And uh, I will talk with Grady tomorrow. Um, yeah, I I'm, just, I'm just reading this. I thought some of this, it sounded like they had met with you. And I guess I didn't know that they hadn't met with you. Um, and 
Um, do you want, I feel like in fairness, do you want me to read these talking points or not? Because they were sent to me. No, don't say anymore. You know, I don't right? think we need to. Okay, I went right. through them. Okay. Yeah. And, right. and we're not making an argument tonight anyway, because okay. I think that we, I think we also were a little, I, I think we thought things had been done a little bit different in some areas. And, yeah. you and know, it, obviously we do want mm -hmm. to support the why. We do want to support the vision, but we also want to make sure that things that are being, that things are preserved properly and, and protected and, um, it's like the opposite of that. <laughs> no, I promise it's not. I mean, well, you know, it it seems like it's going to end up crunched up in a dumpster. I know. It, okay, but I don't. Okay. like I'm not. I'm not the one who makes that decision. I know. I'm just you know, it's one thing. That, but yeah, we'd be really grateful if if uh, you if you could, uh, Mayor, if you say you're going to yes. talk to Brady, if you yes. could just pass on some of the stuff that we talked about tonight and Absolutely. see if we can't get back on the on the right track here. Uh, we we're very much aware. Of the need for progress and the need for for uh, proper use of the of the properties in town and and the beneficial use and and all of those things and the need for child care um, all of those things weigh heavily on us as well we just want to make okay. sure it's done properly that's all okay Jer jeremy you want to add to yeah I and mean, i i would just echo i guess the need the, the there are buildings that are designated for a reason. And those buildings, I think, from my perspective, require like, part of this you know, since job is to make sure that those buildings, every effort is being taken to find a preservation solution and they're not demolished unless there truly is no feasible way to save them. There's no viable buyer. There's no way that the current owner can restore it. And in my mind, the, you know, one feasibility study from one company is not every feasible effort to try to save yeah. the building. And I the other thing I just mentioned briefly, I the, the the nods to history are are you know are better than nothing. But I feel like in the preservation rule like all that that's mitigation. And mitigation is not the same as preservation. Like a plaque is not a building, a historical yeah. exhibit is not when you walk down the street and you know for a building that is the oldest church in the community that's been in place for over a hundred years. Um, you know, it's, it's it's a kind gesture, um, but it's not in any way comparable to. And I do, I, I understand that very well. I'm a tribal citizen. My, you know, I look at things where we have a plaque where we used to have people and that means a lot. So I understand what you're saying. And I do think that there needs to be the best effort made. And it sounds like there's been miscommunication and, you know, I appreciate that we're meeting that. I mean, I'm assuming, but you know, we are committed to making sure it's done right. We really are. So yeah, and I, I mean, I think one, you know, the other thing really is is we we all represent this whole town and community at large, you know, and what we decide or talk about in here is going to be in the paper, is going to be historical record, you know. So, it, you know, it, you can't bring it back. And it's a hard, it's a, a hard argument to make after the fact, uh, when, like I said, the common man who doesn't, wa you know, watch this or listen to this recording or whatever has no idea, yeah. and all of a sudden they're crunching it up, and we're like, oh, you know, our our job, right? What are, what are we doing here? We're all volunteers on this commission, and here, this is a historic church on Main Street. It's kind of like you know, this is why we're here. Moment. Um, and I, so it makes it really tough. And I, you know, I don't, and it's just, it is a little disappointing. It's a little more than disappointing to see that here, here we are now, and the mayor is presenting Grady's plans to us from. No, no, no I'm not presenting his. Well, it plans. seems, it certainly a seems like. A couple of talking points, that's all. And well, I'm nevertheless, sure. it's just. That's fine. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I have never been involved in one of those. I had talking points. I said I would come. And that is not the same as somebody's plans. So, um, I it, I just read that and we're gonna go for it. I just have a question. Were there other this building is now I know that um the building next to the uh library was on the National Historic Register. Okay. The the one that's being the fire station, the old fire station? No, no, the the, the old library. Yeah. The um uh 
hubby house. Yeah, Levitt yeah. hubby house. Hubby. Yeah, right, we just, yeah. we just talked about it, yeah. Levitt hubby house. On Main Street, on Main, right on Main Street, any other buildings right there that are on the National Historic... Oh, 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 yeah. There's a number of them. A whole there is district. That's that's a whole much of them. Downtown Historic District, which is... Yeah. Goes mm -hmm. to the Does post go? office yeah. and across the street to the courthouse. And it it's like six buildings. And was the fire station was the fire no, station? Fire station. It was, was a non-contributing. Yeah, because it was because the when they built the fire station in the 30s, they built it in the back, essentially the backyard of the Hobie House. So therefore, by proximity, it was listed on that register, not because it was significant in any in any way uh, for for what had you know happened there or anything like that. It was only because it was on the back in literally in the property lot. Right. So when the town bought that property in 1909 or something like that, yeah, that was part of that lot. I and, and so was this building. So that building was here. This church here. Was this always here in, in Greenfield? No, no, no. It was no that came from some other town. Yeah, which is a phenomenal story, which even at, I think is. Yeah, yeah. yeah correct. It's impressive what? by the construction so, of the Quabbin. So yeah. it wasn't, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, no. which which I think is, which actually, when you look at it and you say, oh, here's a 200 year old church, and actually, it's 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 actually in great condition because it's not really, it, it was all rebuilt. So it doesn't have 200 year old nails and, and it's not all post beetle rotted and all that kind of stuff. It's actually like a 1930s building, you know? Well, they used as much. They used the timbers and stuff, but like right. in terms of construction materials and things like that, it's not like it's falling down kind of thing is what I'm saying. No, no, it makes it makes it more stable, think that like, the, the, like the mortar and the concrete and all that kind of stuff from an old building. It's like getting new new joints, getting your joints replaced. Right. It's I that kind of thing. There has been some miscommunication between the Y and their plans and us and you and yeah. you know, I'm glad that we're finding it now instead of three months from now or whenever. So yeah. um yes, by all yeah. means. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean yeah. I am glad though that this discussion happened and you yeah. know, yeah. I think that the miscommunications need to be fixed. Yeah. So communications and then you have and then you make have public hearing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um yeah. But we'll talk to Grady and see if we can get copies of, you know, where he is, plans, all that stuff, studies. But actually, yeah. as Jeremy says, it that's out of our purview. We're not going to be making judgments about future plans. Build, We're yeah. just, we wow. just have to assert that it's a historic building and that it is subject to the demolition delay bylaw. And then we follow these. So but we're not to the point where you guys need to weigh in on it yet. We have to get to that point because... We've not even applied for those permits. So yeah. when the Y applies for those permits, that's when we come back to you. Is that correct? I think they're that's ready to correct. apply for yeah. it now. I mean, the I mean, they have a contract is, from yesterday. It seems yeah. like the very next step would be yeah. apply. I mean, I'm, I'm we, not a... Uh, no, you know. I agree. And mm -hmm. that should have been... We should have had better communication about that because um, I didn't know about that either. But um, again, I'm on day eight now. So <laughs> I'm <sorry. laughs> I, I promise I'm trying. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but, tough slug. But uh, I do think, you know... It just sounds like coming at this point was a little premature and it's yeah. the application of the the permit that would trigger the next meeting with you all. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and really to roll it back, like we met with Grady, we had a nice discussion. Um, and now we're hearing this information kind of coming from the coming from the mayor. And I'm like, well, we're well, what's up with that? That seems a little weird. A little weird. Okay. A lot weird. Well, and I then and in just like just on the reading of just on the nature of the church and the reading of the demolition delay, like it's it's kind of an it's just like a natural fit. Like, I mean, it's this is our job. This well, is our job. Yeah. And I mean, we we do support it. I know it might have felt confrontational. It really wasn't. No, it, you know, um, I, think not at all. The, I think that the result of miscommunication sometimes can lead to things perhaps feeling more confrontational than they really are. No, at, least yeah, on, I mean, at least on my end. At the end of the day, we're all here for the same reason. It's exactly. because we want what's best for the town. Not, yeah. not at all. And Aaron, I only have one question for you. Why is it taking you so long 
to get into full up to full speed. I mean, you had more than a week. <laughs> I know. Come on now. Come on. She's done in two weeks. I, yeah. well, I, 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 just, I just want to say yeah, that hang I, on. Yeah, I'm really hang grateful on. for you, both of you, to, for coming. And I think that what's happened here is exactly what we would want to happen. And I think I we, should on, we should move on and and yeah. and uh, put this aside and, and go forward to the next step, which uh, might be the filing of a permit request or it might be something else but we certainly okay. we certainly have pretty well uh, chewed this over and i think all right i f i'm feeling good about it i think it's absolutely what we want the way we want things to happen so i agree okay. i yeah. i'm i know i'm absolutely. still in the idealistic phase but i love municipal government it's great <laughs> yeah. thanks for coming okay. out yeah, thanks it. mayor thank you very much thank you. Okay, well, that sounds like it'll be an agenda item for October. That'll be October. Fun. Yeah. That'll so be I fun. did. I did just email you the demolition delay ordinance and yep, the mayor. Yep, and but I have it pulled up. And okay, I so was it's all there. And, there. and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to go through it and and no. do my own. Sorry, maybe eight days, days is a long time. Days, I know. <laughs> but it's more than a week. Oh, we're not the most important. Connection. And I mean, <laughs> my oldest moved into college yesterday, so nice. Good for you. Congratulations. Oh, I'm not <laughs> crying again. It's fine. <laughs> Wait, is that, is that eight weekdays or the weekends too? <laughs> Last <laughs> Tuesday was my first day. So, okay. All right. All right. So, you can work so on the weekends. That's five. Right? Well, that's, I don't even know. that's six <laughs> business days. I don't know. Six how business days. Yeah. Don't count the week. Doing my best. <laughs> um, again, I was a history major for a reason. Oh, if I don't know numbers. <laughs> yeah, we expect you at all the meetings. Obviously, right, Tim? I think well, it's. I'll be you know. bringing my children as well. They're. Yeah, yeah whatever. Hey. Um, um, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I do appreciate what you guys do. I really do. I'm not saying that to blow smoke up any orifices. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, 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 you know, like not to, not to flog it more, but, you know, this is our job. This is why we're here. Absolutely. We're all volunteers. Yeah. And here's a really, really old church right on Main Street that makes the town look like a nice New England town. And we're like, yeah, totally. Whack it. That's not any, uh, that's hard for me as the chair of the commission. I understand. And I'm sure for these guys to be like, sign off on that. Um, I, under I really understand. Um, that's very hard. Okay. There are definitely moments where sometimes as a representative of the city, you have to be a representative of the city. So. Yeah, yeah we get it. We get it. We this get is it. what we do. I really appreciate it. I know the mayor appreciates it. Um, she's not quite as sentimental maybe as I am, but she's got she's lovely and I adore her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Aaron, uh, here's the sign. Oh yes, thank you. These are the ones for Aaron. Three, three of them. Three, three of them. So what three, two, what the next steps look like? What does it look like to set up a public hearing and all that? So I think that they'll have to apply for a permit as the next step. And then when the permit is applied for, that's when it will trigger you guys again. Right. So, yes. and that and it's, it's mapped out like within yeah. seven days. There is a, yeah. there's a, there's a, a flow chart on this, mm -hmm. on the city website and you have it if you, I mean, I, yeah, I could figure out how to email yeah. you guys right now, but that's another it's totally thing. Fine. Right. It's totally right. fine. We've got until right. October yeah. <laughs> now, right. which is um, great. And we, there will be no yeah. meeting next month, correct? So I'll let you October know. October 3rd, I believe it yeah. is, yeah. Um, because mm -hmm. all, I'm marching with the marching band with the parade. Good. Oh, oh, okay. Nice. My important. boys are in the marching band and I'm the... Yep, um, the, that's a great the, thing. The band parents, too. Oh, that's great. Great. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. Cool. My son was in the marching band for me. That's, that's a hike. That is a hike. That's a hike. That's a long hike. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Sorry. Second. Second. All in favor? In favor. Yeah. Bye. Right. So Bye. Moved. Meeting adjourned. Yeah. Right. Come on, guys.